if we have the courage, you know, to open the door and get in the game, especially if we're surrounded by a great team, we always discover that we're braver than we believe, stronger than we seem, and smarter than we think. And that's the gift that I try to give from stage. And I do it by using some crazy examples and stories from my sport of adventure racing. Just out of curiosity, has anybody here ever heard of adventure racing before like one minute ago? So it's a sport that was invented by a crazy, awesome Frenchman. And the race director will ask you to meet them in the most remote place they can find on Earth. And they hand each team a set of maps and compasses and rules. And the next morning, they say, ready, set, go. We'll see you guys in 600 to 1,000 miles. Whichever team gets their first wins. Here's a real kicker. Everyone on the team has to stay together within 50 yards of each other from start to finish. So based on the rules of this crazy sport and the fact that we couldn't say that we were successful unless all of our teammates also crossed the finish line, which sounds very familiar to every manager and leader in this room. Every successful business professional is in an adventure race every single day of your lives, and especially you guys, because you have a small team of men and women who are trying to make it through a seemingly endless series of checkpoints in pursuit of a nearly impossible goal, working against extreme time pressures and constantly changing conditions, and with the goal of doing it among the best of the best in the world. Hi, adventure racers. Are you guys ready for an awesome adventure? <laughs> I'm honored to share with you guys what I've learned from some of the world's greatest extreme teammates about how we build and lead the kind of teams that succeed against the toughest of odds, year in and year out, no matter how difficult the challenge or how tough the climb. The eight essential elements of extreme performance, and this is how we build and lead world-class teams that are better together than any individual could ever be alone. And I'm gonna share the highlight reel with you guys today. Helping your people become we thinkers versus me thinkers. A wee thinker walks out their front door or walks into your hotel every single day and says, you know what, there's a world full of teammates for me here. Not a world full of people I have to get over, around, and through to accomplish my goals. It's all about taking your core strengths and talents and background and experience and competency and saying, you know what, we're not just going to find a way to tilt the game board in our favor. Maybe we're going to be the ones who find a way to completely change the game. We never achieve our greatest height by stepping on somebody else's back. You know, we always achieve our greatest height when we put our teammates on our shoulders. And we don't inspire the people around us by showing them how awesome we are. We inspire our team members by putting them on our shoulders and showing them how talented and useful and smart and worthy and amazing they are. Because at the end of the day, if you as a leader set out to inspire your people versus impress them, you can achieve both of those things. You never have a goal you can accomplish alone, do you? Absolutely not, and if you do, it's not big enough. What makes us valuable to our team members isn't even necessarily what we know. You know, very often it's based on what we're willing to learn along the way. And very often the rookie on the team can bring such an interesting and unique background and perspective, they can be the linchpin to your team's success. Let's always find a way to capitalize on each other's strengths and throw a toe line to a teammate when the going gets tough for them. Because when you work with me, grabbing a toe line is never seen as a weakness. It's understood that that's how we win. And if you wanna go fast, you can go alone. If you wanna go far, you gotta go. Yeah. Yes! Great leaders also embrace their challenges and setbacks when they happen, because they happen to all of us. Now, I had a uh, small medical setback uh, about eight years ago. I discovered I had end-stage osteoarthritis in both my hips. But the neatest thing that these crazy metal hips led me to was the best thing that's ever happened in my whole life. And that's the inspiration to start the Project Athena Foundation. And what we do at Project Athena is my semi-broken adventure racer friends and I help survivors of medical or traumatic setbacks live an adventurous dream as part of their recovery. Because at the end of the day, you're never defined by your setback, you're defined by your comeback. Pain is mandatory. Suffering is optional. You guys ready to race? Yeah. 
You guys ready to bring it? Yeah. All right, let's count from five. Five, four. 